Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm in Edinburgh and I'm going to be travelling down to London King's Cross on board the brand new Lumo service. This is actually the first day for this train service so I'm really looking forward to trying it out and seeing what the private operator has to offer. Let's go! Good morning from Edinburgh Waverley, the main station here in the Scottish capital. Today's journey starts with a beautiful sunrise in this picturesque city. It's a great way to start off for Luna, a brand new train operator here in the UK, running a handful of express trains between Edinburgh, Newcastle and London, but with low fares being a key selling point. I'm going to be travelling aboard their first public train service today, between the capital of Scotland and the capital of England. Let's head down into Edinburgh Waverley Station via the aptly named Waverley Steps. On the way down you can find the Waverley Mall, featuring a number of eateries and shops to prepare you for your journey. As I'm planning to eat on the train, I decided to give it a miss this time. Edinburgh Waverley boasts an impressive station building, perfect for serving its many departures to various locations through Scotland and England. Most departures are operated by ScotRail, the soon to be nationalised operator of both short and long distance train services through Scotland. My train today will be the 0911 Lumo service to London King's Cross, operated by an open access company which is part of First Group. No visit to the station is complete without a look at the ornate waiting hall in the centre of the station, which has what I can only describe as a palatial feel to it. Today's service is departing from Platform 5, at the eastern side of the station's main hall. As you can see, the train has little in the way of intermediate stops, calling it just Morpeth, Newcastle and London King's Cross. While awaiting my train, I also saw an LNER Azuma. These Hitachi trains are used by LNER to operate the competing rail service on the Edinburgh to London route and are of a similar design to the type used by Lumo. As I am, to put it mildly, unimpressed with the LNER Azuma experience, I was certainly curious to see what the Lumo offering would be like. Edinburgh also sees a lot of these Class 385 units. ScotRail use these on many shorter distance routes out of this station as well as around the Glasgow area. I'll take this brief interlude to remind you of my social media channels, displayed on screen now. My social media followers are always first to find out about my rail travels around the world. If you haven't already seen them, then be sure to go and take a look. In plenty of time, today's Class 803 electric unit is pulling into the platform, proudly showcasing Lumo's indisputably eye-catching blue livery. This unit is 803003 part of a fleet of five electric units built by Hitachi in Northern England. They are capable of 125 miles an hour and only have standard class seating. Time to board my train. You may have noticed that this train has almost exclusively airline style seating. My seat today is Coach D seat 30, unsurprisingly an airline style seat at a window. Some tables are available, however this is limited to just two per carriage to increase capacity. 
I opted to sit in the unreserved part of Coach E as I wished to travel nearer to some of my friends on this journey. As the inaugural public service of LUMO, this train's departure was met with a backpipe fanfare. Whilst I can't imagine this is a regular occurrence, it really was a nice touch. departure today was on time at 0911. Today's route takes us down the full 393 mile length of the East Coast Main Line, connecting London with Yorkshire, the North East and Scotland. Journey time is scheduled as 4 hours and 37 minutes. Shortly after leaving, the so-called Customer Ambassador, which is LUMO's invented term for the train's guard, delivered a welcoming announcement to all passengers on board the train. Very warm welcome to each and every one of you aboard this LUMO service to London King's Cross, operating on our brand new Atachi 803 train. My name is Jack and together with Kieran and Gary, it is our pleasure to be on board Ambassadors alongside Kev, who is our customer driver today. Shortly, we'll be passing through the train with our onboard services, which include delivering your pre-ordered refreshments, from our Lumo Eats service. Our aim here at Lumo is for you to enjoy the Lumo travel experience, and if there's anything myself or other ambassadors can do, please don't hesitate to ask us. Thank you and travel well with Lumo. Lumo Eats is the food pre-ordering service on the Lumo trains. With this service, I simply visited the Lumo website, selected my departure station, destination, departure date and time, before specifying my order, paying, and it was delivered to my seat on board. The menu is fairly expansive, featuring various snacks, hot and cold drinks, alcoholic beverages, as well as sandwiches and pasties. I ordered a hot chocolate and a cheese plowman sandwich. I also ordered a croissant, however this was unavailable due to stock issues, and automatically refunded as a result. Something quite interesting is how the sandwiches are actually M&S food branded. This is certainly a catering system that I've not seen before on a train. So, one major problem that many passengers have with these Hitachi AT300 trains is the seating, which I find to be too hard and very poorly shaped. I'm pleased to report that on LUMO, this is absolutely not the case, with a really decent amount of padding being available, as well as the seats having an ergonomic shape. There's also a winged headrest for additional comfort. Overall, this was a really comfortable seat design for this four and a half hour journey and a massive step up when compared to LNER trains for example. Adjustable armrests are available, though they are very small. The little bit of padding was definitely appreciated though. As for legroom, I found the seats to be spacious, offering ample room to spread out through the journey. I particularly liked how the back of the seat in front has a groove to allow for extra legroom. Each airline style seat has a decently sized seat back table. Above this you can find an individual reading light with two brightness settings. This table also slides towards the seat a little bit, allowing for extra room, for example if you have a larger laptop, as well as a little groove for storing items.
Beneath the seat in front of you, there are some power sockets, taking the form of a single 3-pin socket as well as two USB sockets. I often say that beneath the seat in front is the best place for a plug socket, for the simple fact that it makes getting out of the seat much easier. It's great to see that Lumo has paid attention to this small detail. There are also the standard sump lines as you'd expect, as well as retractable coat hooks, though I find it's pretty rare to actually see these in use. This is Berwick-upon-Tweed, a town just a couple miles south from the Scotland-England border. Just metres after the station is the Royal Border Bridge over the River Tweed, which despite its name is not actually on the border. It has been our pleasure having you on board and we look forward to inviting you back on one of our services in the near future. Once again, thank you and travel well with Lumo. After about an hour and 20 minutes of travel, we are on the approach to Morpeth. This is by far the smallest station served by Lumo, with just two platforms. I'm not really sure why this service even stops here, so if you do know, please leave a comment. After just 10 minutes, we are passing Heaton Depot in Newcastle. And a few minutes after that, we are on the approach to Newcastle Station. You may have noticed that our main stations on this route all have airports with frequent flights to London. One of Lumo's target markets is those who currently take flights from London to Newcastle and Edinburgh, with big selling points being its green credentials and friendly service. Arrival into Newcastle is on time at 10.48. Following a five minute wait at Newcastle, the train departs for its non-stop journey down to London King's Cross, scheduled to take around three hours. We now cross the River Tyne using the King Edward VII Bridge, offering a fantastic view over the city of Newcastle. While speeding towards London, we pass through many stations, such as Darlington. These stations receive their long distance service from other operators, such as LNER, Cross Country, Transpennine Express and Grand Central. From this point, the onboard trolley service appears, selling drinks and snacks for the prices you'd expect on a train. It might be a little bit expensive, but it's still cheaper than what I've seen on a flight going off my past experiences. I opted for another hot chocolate which cost me £2.40. We're now speeding through Yorkshire, which you can easily tell as it's raining. However, this doesn't last long and by North Allerton it has already cleared up. We are now cruising at around 125 miles an hour, our train's top speed. It's great to be going so fast for such little money. More details on ticket prices later. Here is the National Railway Museum in York, well worth a visit, and entry is free too. You can even see 60163 Tornado, a new build steam locomotive that was finished in 2008. The train now passes through York, a major stop for just about every train that goes through here, except Lumo. It feels really weird to run through the station without stopping, but thankfully there's still enough time to marvel at the impressive station roof. This is Doncaster Station, another major hub on the UK railway network. Doncaster is also where we pass a northbound Lumo service heading towards Edinburgh. This service was the second Lumo-operated train to run in service after the inaugural run I am currently riding. 
If you're not already, then now is a perfect time to subscribe to my channel. I upload videos just like this one frequently, showcasing interesting train journeys from around the world, and clicking subscribe will allow you to be notified every time I upload a new video. Time to have a quick look around the train. First up, the toilets. As you would hope for a brand new train, everything was working fine, including the soap and water being fully stopped and the hand dryer working fine. The door is now locked. Moving through the train, we can take a look at the luggage situation. These trains have just three luggage stacks like this for five carriages. Thankfully there are large overhead luggage racks, but personally I think these trains will really struggle to handle luggage in the future. Especially with the luggage lockers at carriage ends also being fully occupied, with any remaining luggage ending up in the doorways. Each train also has two wheelchair spaces situated in the southernmost carriage. This train does have free Wi-Fi, though I found it to be somewhat slow. Perhaps it was just temporarily bad signal, as other passengers on the train didn't seem to have any issues. I was, however, able to access their entertainment system, which seemed to have a good selection of both movies and TV shows. I couldn't make a video on Lumo without mentioning their app. It's actually really useful. My favourite feature is how you can plan a journey from a specific location rather than just the train station, with additional transfers on the underground or buses for example factored in. As we speed through Peterborough I think it's time to talk about the ticket prices on Lumo. For this journey I paid just £13.10, including my 16 to 25 railcard discount of a third. On this 393 mile journey that gives a price per mile of about 3 pence. This is clearly outstanding value for money, as this kind of price is what I would expect to pay in the depths of Central or Eastern Europe, but yet it's on a high speed train here in the UK. In conclusion, I have to say that I am highly impressed by the Lumo offering. The company seemed to have a really good idea of what passengers want, and clearly a lot of thought has gone into the subtle little design features of the seat. I was also a big fan of the friendly service from all of the staff on board the train. One downside to the Lumo operation has to be the lack of a seat selection, which, when you operate such a simple fleet, really should be available. Having said that, I highly recommend travelling with Lumo, the service is comfortable, fast, friendly and great value. Now arriving into London King's Cross, 5 minutes ahead of schedule at 13.43. As I'm leaving the train, why not leave a comment letting me know what you thought of the Lumo service? I'm interested to know how you think it compares to other travel options between London and Edinburgh. Thank you for watching my video on the Lumo Edinburgh to London service. If you enjoyed it then be sure to give it a like as that really helps the channel grow. And for more similar content then subscribe to the channel for frequent uploads.